Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be reviewing the new Olimar Cosmetics palette. So if you want to hear my review, watch my tutorial, then just keep watching. Basically, I bought this palette because Olimar Cosmetics is a new company. They have released one palette and one set of brushes before and as many of you know, the palette was absolutely amazing. This is a really small new company. The makeup artist that started it is Miami based, um, so the products are made in the United States. So I just wanted to support this small company when she came out with her second palette because the first one was so good. I definitely picked up the second one. So this is the Reina del Caribe, excuse my pronunciation. Pronunciations volume 2 palette. Hey, okay, okay, so I know I'm a sight to see right now <laughs> But um editors know I did want to say I got the first palette in boxycharm And I almost didn't want to buy this palette on the chance that you know it comes in boxycharm but according to Gabby's Twitter, which is, you know, the owner of Almar, um, sh this palette is not going to be in BoxyCharm, so that was definitely my go-ahead to pick this up. So for those of you concerned, she said that it's not going to BoxyCharm. Now the first palette she came out with is just the volume one. It has the same name. So we're going to talk about the packaging. It comes in a navy little booklet. On the side it says volume two and Reina del Caribe. Very simple packaging. The literal exact same packaging of the first one, just different colors. And then you open it up and you actually get a mirror, which is something that the first palette didn't have. And the price is exactly the same. And you get eight eyeshadows. Now this palette is $28 and you will notice on the shade names there's little pictures either a moon or a little water drop. So what the water drop means is that this shadow works best when it is wet and then what the little moon means it is best used when the product is dry. So essentially all the shimmers she does recommend using wet. So this palette is only $28 which I think is a really great deal. One for the quality you're getting and you're still getting eight eyeshadows and just a really nice palette overall. So $28 is pretty affordable for an eyeshadow palette if you compare it to a lot of other brands sold at Sephora. This palette features eight highly opaque shades inspired by the immersive tropical nightlife of the Caribbean. Let's go over the swatches. So you get four metallic or shimmer colors and then you get four matte colors. Now as you can see, this is a very colorful palette so you can create some really fun looks with this. Now immediately with the color scheme, what I noticed is I actually kind of had a little bit more difficult time trying to think about the look I wanted to create. There are a few looks that you can definitely create. So just to help you out, here are some things that I thought you could do. You could create a really great purpley eye using these three colors. You can do what I did and focus on these three and get a green kind of warm smoky eye. You could get a traditional silver and black smoky eye and then of course using these two will create more of a neutral look so you can play with colors for sure but I definitely had to think a little bit to create the look that I wanted to create so I'm gonna be honest I don't think I would ever bring this palette on my own to travel on my own just because I definitely would like to pull in other colors from other palettes which brings me to my next point the first palette is a great complementary palette to this new palette I just feel like these two together go hand in hand. I would be totally happy bringing these two as my eyeshadow palettes on vacation. Not this one alone, unfortunately, but the two of those together, very complementary to each other. You can create a lot of stunning looks using the two, but not my favorite color scheme. Individually, I love all the colors in here. I felt inspired because there are colors from all over the board, and it pushed me to step out of my comfort zone to try and think and create a look, but sometimes I don't want to have to think. I just want the look to be there just by looking at the palette. So that's that could be a positive or negative for you on how you feel about this palette. But yes, I really do like it, but it's not the most cohesive palette. So let's go into the formula of these guys. Her metallics are actually one of my favorite metallic formulas ever. I think they're beautiful. They are so creamy. They swatch beautiful. They go on the lid as they look in the pan. They're extremely pigmented, high shine. Um, I do use them either wet or with my finger. That's how you're going to get the best outcome. But believe it or not, these metallic shadows work great with just a dry brush as well but of course with every shade if you wet it you're gonna get the most impact 
I will say this shade right here, of all of her shadows, this definitely has the least pigmentation of a shimmer shade, but I don't think that's bad because it is a neutral shade, and it's still like really good pigmentation just compared to the other colors that I'm used to from her. This did give off the least amount of pow. This mojito shade is everything, and this is Azucar. It's an amazing silver shade. Now, I do want to talk about the matte formula. Her mattes are a little bit more dry than some of my favorite matte formulas. Uh, for lighter colors, I do like more of a dry formula I feel like it spreads the product out better but for this shade in particular Damas it's too dry it came off a little bit patchy and I definitely had to work with it a little bit more on my eye still liked it but I think this is the one shade that I'm not too crazy about in this palette but it's still good but it is a little bit dry and difficult to work with what I really like about the black in here is that it's not a super intense pitch black it's actually the perfect black to add smokiness to an eye look so it blended out great it wasn't too too startling because if it is too deep and I put it in an outer corner color a lot of times with those types of blacks I find they are difficult to blend this was the perfect black to smoke out my look but overall the quality of this palette is very awesome for $28 her metallic formula is unbeatable for the price I really did like this yellow shade it was quite pigmented the pinks a little bit chalky but it's still because of the dryness I think it almost spreads out better as a brand maybe they could work on their deeper shades a little bit more but for $28, this is a really amazing palette. Very consistent with the formula in the first palette. Also, really quickly, I do want to talk out some of the brushes I used in this look. Uh, she does have an Ojitos Brush Trio Volume 2. Um, that are these guys, and these are $18 for a set of three. I have her other one too, but I didn't feel like pulling them out. It's too much work because I'm lazy. But these are really lovely brushes. You get a really great blending brush, a pencil brush, which is a little bit tighter than I would have preferred for this particular look, but there is a time and a place for this brush. And then the only one that I'm a little unsure of is this guy right here. I think I would use it to pack on a wash of color or maybe as a blending brush. So this one's the only kind of awkward brush, but I mean, she makes really good soft brushes. So I added these to get free shipping, so it was totally worth it for me. For the look I did, I took Mambo, which is the yellow and the blending brush from the Ojitos Brush Trio, and I blended that all in my crease. This is a really good yellow. Yellows can be difficult to work with, but as you can see, it applied very pigmented, and I didn't have any issues getting on my lid and getting it to look good. The next shade I went into was Damas. This was the color that is my least favorite in the palette. You can see I kind of struggled to get it to blend out. It did look very patchy. Um, I did have to really work with it to get it to look okay. I, at the end of the day, it did get the job done. But that one did take a little bit of extra love to get it how I wanted it. Now, the next shade I took was Mojito, which is the gorgeous green color, the color I was most excited to use in this look. I put it on a brush, and then I wet the brush, and I just put it on my lid. And, I mean, you can see how amazing it is. Her metallic formula, unbeatable. This is a gorgeous green gorgeous color so obsessed can't wait to do more looks with this color i then took on a smaller more tight brush a little bit of caballeros which is the black shade and i used that to kind of smoke out and deepen the look and i think it did an, a fabulous fabulous job um on my lower lash line i just used mambo and caballeros um corner just to kind of smoke her out some more to make the look more cohesive and i finally went in with this shade right here as my highlight it's definitely too deep for me as a highlight if you are a deeper skin tone you can use it as an inner corner highlight and underbrow but for me it wasn't working and I finished my look and voila this is what I managed to do with the palette um definitely a lot prettier look than I thought I thought I was gonna struggle with this palette to create a look but wow I am into it side note do you guys see this highlight this is from the first palette La Costa which is this color right here don't be afraid to use it as a highlight, guys. It works fabulous. I did kind of go over it, my highlight areas with it because that first color I used was way too dark. So, I mean, overall application was super amazing with this palette. So, if you want to support a small company, I definitely would say try out this palette. It is really, really good. Support a smaller I mean, it's such cute packaging and I'm just, I love the colors in this. I can't wait to create looks using both of these together. Really quickly, I am going to insert a clip of me comparing these two. So really quickly, I wanted to do a comparison between the first palette 
and the second palette because some colors sorry are kind of in the same family like we have a yellowy orange color we have two greens some blues I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see that they are very different. So just so you can see, the first palette is the top row and I tried to match them up to what could be construed as similar colors with the bottom row, which is the second palette. As you can see, the neutral color in here, the one is much more deep than this one. Um, you have a deep navy, doesn't really match up with the silver at all. There's two green shades. Obviously, the one in the first palette is much more bright. Mojito's much more deep. You have a yellow shade and an orange shade. These two are very complementary towards each other and definitely not the same. These two colors, I would say, are the most similar. So this is Damas from the second palette. And then, oh my gosh, <laughs> Guantanamara. Guantanamara. <laughs> Anyways, these two are similar. This one's slightly more deep and plummy. This one has a little bit more red into it. But other than than that yeah these are super different so if you have one don't worry about them being similar to the second one all right so i hope you guys found that helpful let me know if you picked it up or if you're thinking of picking it up remember to of course subscribe to my channel like this video and do this that and the other and i will see you guys in my next video thank you for stopping by bye guys